John Lee would always recommend starting out with three to seven, he said, good long, deep in and out breaths to highlight the process of breathing in the body and also to give you some energy. Because there is a tendency as the mind settles down for the breath to get very subtle, very quiet. And sometimes it's not really enough for the, the body's energy needs. And John Fuang had a student one time who found that she really liked the quiet breath. That's where she would always go in her meditation. And I remember one night John Fuang criticizing her for that. He says, look, you've really got to read the body to see what it needs right now. And if you go just for the quiet breath all the time, it saps your strength. So an important part of the meditation is learning how to read what your body needs. And when it needs more energy, give it more energy, even though it may not seem as quiet and refined as you like. You've got to take care of things. And the same with the mind. There's the issue of directed thought and evaluation. And again, John Lee has you go through the body in quite a lot of detail to settle things down, to clear things up so that it's a good place to settle down. And I know a number of people who complain that it's not really all that quiet, thinking about the breath, working with the breath energy in the different parts of the body. What's well, part of the work you need to do in order to ready things to settle down in a way that's going to be solid and lasting? So it's important that we be willing to do the work that's needed for good, solid concentration. Not simply go hiding out in a little quiet corner. Because it's in allowing our awareness to spread and fill the whole body that we get the proper foundation for our meditation. And in doing the work, we exercise our faculties of mindfulness, alertness, and our discernment. I've noticed a tendency in some circles that a student comes and if they seem to be talented in the direction of concentration, they're encouraged in that direction. If they're more talented in the area of analyzing what's going on in their minds, they're encouraged in that direction. But a John Fuin would work at cross purposes. He said, if you're already talented in concentration, you need more work in learning how to think about what's going on, analyzing what's going on. And if you're already talented in Analyzing things, you've got to learn how to be quiet and just sit with things for a while and not predetermine things all the time. Because you've got to learn how to bring things into balance and learn how to detect when things are out of balance. So there's work to be done here. As John Lee says, it's your concentration work, the directed thought and evaluation. You start out with things being rather coarse, he says, and you learn how to bring them to refinement. But then sometimes you find that, okay, the refined breath is too weak. You're drifting off. So you've got to strengthen things again. To get in touch with the body and to have a sense of knowing how to listen to it and respond to its needs. This is especially difficult for people who have body issues, where they basically want to run away and block out their awareness of the body. You have to learn how to trust yourself and also trust the different sensations in the body, that you can work with them. So in the beginning, you may want to start with just one little spot in the body that you're familiar with, or that seems okay, and be willing to hang out there for a while. It may not seem impressive, it may not seem all that quiet yet. But you're working on potentials here. 
You're also working on patience, learning how to allow potentials to develop in a positive direction. And this is one of the constant themes and the stories that we have heard as children, that you can't judge things by their appearances, and you certainly can't judge things by what they are now as to what they're going to bring in the future. And there's a stir of the ugly duckling, turns into a swan, the troll that has gold, the little mouse that's able to help the lion. So you have to learn how to look around and see what potentials there are here. And when the Buddha says, okay, work with the potentials in the body, work with the breath energy, even though part of the mind may want to slip off into a nice little cocoon where it doesn't have to think about anything and doesn't have to deal with anything at all, that kind of cocoon goes nowhere. You've got work to do. You've got to come back to the breath. And even though it may not seem all that comfortable and all that blissful to begin with, there's a potential here that you're going to explore. And so you give it some space. Don't push the breath too much. Don't force it too much. Just allow it to go into areas where it may not have gone before. Again, you're not trying to push things or force things here. The operative word is allow, allow, allow. Allow the breath to go down the back. Allow the breath to go through the different organs in the torso. Allow it to go out your arms, out your legs. And then as you go through the body with that word allow, you begin to notice that there are some parts of the body that are resistant. And in some cases the resistance is pretty short-lived. All you have to do is think allow, and things will begin to loosen up. Other times they don't loosen up so quickly. So just make a note of that and say, this is an area I'm going to have to come back to. And work through the parts that you can connect so they feel free-flowing. And the energy in the different parts of the body is mutually supporting rather than working at cross-purposes. The energy in your arms. Your right arm helps your left arm, your left arm helps your right arm. Energy in your legs, the different sides help one another. All the different organs in the body, think of them all connecting up and strengthening one another. And as for the parts that don't want to join in yet, just leave them alone for the time being. It's like creating a union of different countries. Some countries are really recalcitrant. They're waiting to see how the union is going to go before they're willing to join. Do you say, okay, it'll take a while, but we're here for the long term. We're here to develop things that will have the best results in the future, rather than going for a quick fix of shutting things off and going off into your cocoon. You've got work to do here, but the work will lead to a greater sense of well-being, a greater sense of bliss. The story of the, of the Buddhist quest for awakening. He did attain certain formless levels of concentration. And it's possible to attain those levels without dealing with the body at all. But when the time came for him to settle on what really was the path, he started with a form of concentration that was very much with the body, focusing on the breath, giving rise to a sense of ease and well-being, refreshment, rapture. Then he would then work through the body in the same way that you would need moisture through dough. This is when your awareness is centered in the body like this, that you open up areas that might have been closed otherwise, that you might have been running away from, and you learn to feel more at ease with them. And at the same time, you're opening up areas of the mind that you might have closed off as well. There was that test they ran recently when they said they found that people who tended to be going into deep concentration were very unaware of themselves psychologically. Well, it depends on the kind of concentration they were doing, but there is that kind of concentration where you're really running away from the present moment, having no sense of the body at all, off someplace else. And people who are into denial, people who are 
ill at ease with their own bodies for one reason or another, tend to go into that kind of concentration. And it's a concentration that doesn't yield much awareness, yield much discernment. And so, of course, people who have that tendency are not going to be all that self-aware. So it's not that concentration makes you unaware of yourself. It's wrong concentration. And it's your often it's an unwillingness to be aware of yourself that drives you into that kind of wrong concentration to begin with. Right concentration requires that you be aware of the whole body and learn how to have a sense of feeling at home here. This may take time as you get to know things, as you get to trust things. As I've said many times before, it's like developing a friendship. You don't just walk up to somebody and immediately be fast friends. There are some people you have an instant rapport for, but the friendship really has to be tested over time for you to know whether that rapport really will work out into a friendship or not. There are some people for whom it's difficult in the beginning, but you find that over time there are people you can trust. That's a friendship that's worth cultivating in spite of whatever difficulties may be involved. So there's work to be done here, but it's good work. And as you get the hang of it, it's work with pleasure. You're learning how to use pleasure for a higher end. So even though we may want to come here and just to tune out, relax for a bit, for the meditation to be genuinely relaxing so that you come away from it with a sense of clarity, and a sense of well-being, a sense of strength, it requires that you work. In a way, it's like going down to the gym. You want to away, kind of come away feeling strong, okay, you have to be willing to exercise. And so here the work, the exercise is directed thought and evaluation around the breath. Establishing a beachhead in the body, an area of the body where you feel at ease, where you feel confident, and then learning how to expand from there. And listening to what the body needs there. Does it need deep breathing? Does it need shallow breathing? We may have the idea that shallow or gentle breathing is better than heavier breathing, but that's not always the case. You have to listen to see what the body needs. And it's in the listening that your mindfulness and alertness develop, that the other good qualities of mind, the discernment, it develops. And together they will bring the mind to a concentration that's really solid and can act as the basis for wisdom, discernment, insight to arise. So it's a case of being willing, willing to put in the effort, confident that the effort will pay off. It's what you give to the meditation that makes all the difference. <laughs>